Today I would like to share to you on the subject, what are you hearing? What are you hearing? There are many voices in this world. You know, many voices in this world which are negative, which are not encouraging, which are discouraging. You know, it reminds me of a story of a famous violinist. His name was Joshua Bell. And this violinist, uh, one day what he did was he, along with his $3.5 million violin, he went to one of the New York suburbs and he stood there, you know, and started playing the violin for 45 minutes. And while he was playing the violin, nobody really paid attention to what he was playing. People were busy, rush hour, people were walking by. You can actually see it on YouTube, it's there recorded. You know, if you put Joshua Bell uh, playing in suburbs, New York suburbs, you know, you will find the YouTube on the video, uh, the video on the YouTube. And so he played for 45 minutes and only very few people paid attention, stood there, listened to him. And only one lady recognized who he was. And in that 45 minutes, he collected $35. And just after two days, he had a concert in Boston. And this concert hall was packed with people and each ticket was minimum at least $100. And you see that while he was playing, nobody were paying attention because they were so engrossed and busy and occupied in the mind with all the things of their life and day-to-day -day life, the busyness and everything else. What I want to say is this. I know many of us, we face challenges in life. Many of us, we go through sometimes stress, Sometimes life is difficult, it's not easy. Sometimes you hear some good, bad news, that's not encouraging. But in midst of all the negativity that goes on, and also when you hear the news, the wars, and you know, um, financial calamity, and the inflation that is going on, and everything else that is going on, do you hear the voice of God, what God is saying to you? What God is saying to you? You know, this word, this is the sentence that Elijah said to King Ahab. Can you hear the sound of abundant rain? In 1 King chapter 18, verse 41, then Elijah said to Ahab, go up and eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance rain. In fact, today we can see that, the sound of abundance rain since morning. You know, why did he say that? Because we read earlier in the scripture, in 18th chapter, verse 2, the scripture says there was a severe famine in Samaria. There was a severe famine in Samaria. People were hungry. People were thirsty. And nothing good was happening at that time. People were discouraged, disheartened. And that's where Elijah, he comes and says, for there is sound of abundance of rain. There is sound of abundance of rain. People of God. Now here, when he says that, it was not even raining. He just prophesied. He spoke it by faith. What do you experience in your life? What are you going through in your life? 
When you look at the condition of the churches in this nation and some of the nations of the world, it looks like the church is on decline, nothing much is happening. And we are praying for a revival, but nothing is happening. But you know what? Like Elijah, I believe that there is that sound of abundance of rain coming. That breakthroughs in your life is coming. Those miracles that you need in your life is coming. Don't lose heart. There is that sound of abundance of rain. Last Sunday I shared to you the promised word about God's timing, God's favor, and the open doors. And the open doors. People of God, let us be ready. Because God is going to use you to be a testimony to many around you. Amen? So that you will be that witness. And now what happens? It says, so Ahab went up to eat and drink. And Elijah, what he did, went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. What was he doing there? He was, I believe, he was praying. He was praying, Lord, I spoke this prophetic word by faith. Now, Lord, you do it. And I believe when the prophetic word comes, it should be backed up with prayer. And that's why, not this week, but next week, from Monday to Friday, we are going to have a time of fasting and prayer. So every evening from 16th of January, we are going to meet for a time of prayer. And I'll encourage the church, come, let's come together and pray. Because there is power in prayer. Because there, God answers prayer. Amen. We have seen in the scripture how God answers prayer. We have seen through the history. And I believe many of you have experienced the power of prayer in your own life. And here Elijah, he knelt down and he prayed. But same time... He had faith that God is going to answer his prayer. And that's why he sends his servant and he says, verse 43, Go up now, look toward the sea. So he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And seven times he said, Go again. Now I was thinking about this servant. First time, Elijah says, go up. I don't know what distance he told him to go. But at least some distance he went to see, look for any sign of rain. First time went, no, nothing. Came back. Second time, Elijah says, go again. Second time, nothing. Third time, nothing. Fourth time, nothing. Fifth time, nothing. Seven times. The servant, maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe servant must be thinking, you know, maybe Elijah has gone a bit <laughs> loopy. <laughs> you know, he's, he keeps sending me again and again and again and again to see if there is any rain. Maybe, you know, this servant must have had some doubt in his mind, you know, oh, I don't think that it's going to rain. Maybe fifth time he would have given up. Sixth time he would have given up. But he was an obedient servant. He kept going as Elijah told him to go. Seven times he said, go again. You know what I see here? Elijah, he not only prayed, he not only had faith, but he had he was persistent. He persevered. He did not give up. That's why I'm telling you, people of God, 
when you face challenges in life, don't give up. It is easy for us to give up or give in. Don't give up. Fight it with the power of prayer and faith because we believe in a living God. Amen? A God of miracles. A God who parted the Red Sea into two, who fed the 5,000, who used Goliath to kill the giant, the, um, who used David to kill the giant. Amen? This is the God we serve. And that same God, he says, I am same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God who says, I am the Lord that changeth not. Do you hear the sound of abundance of rain? <laughs> and he kept going there. And then this is what happens. Verse 44. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said there is a cloud as small as man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. So you see this faith of Elijah. Before anything could happen, he's saying, go and tell him because there's going to be abundance of rain. The rain will be so much that it will stop him. And verse 45 says, And now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind. And there was a heavy rain. And I declare and prophesy over this church, over this place, over this nation, that there is that sound of abundance of rain. Maybe right now you're sitting there and you're wondering, well, I don't see that. Nothing much is happening. But it's coming. It's coming. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? And that's why what we need to do. We need to pray. We need to have faith. We need to persevere. Not give up. You know, there was that Elijah's prophetic expectation. He prophesied, but he also expected, Lord, I prophesied, but I expect that you are going to pour out rain in this land and then there was that prophetic indication he did not just say things and do nothing about it but this man went on his knees and he prayed and had faith and had an expectation from God that God is going to do great things people of God I want to just tell you this you know enemy is at work and he's there to deceive us i have been speaking to you in the past about the bait of satan you know he's there to deceive us to distract us from the purposes and the will of god and this is what in the time of haggai the people of israel were they got distracted they got distracted. They procrastinated. And that's what the word says. Thus speaks the Lord of us saying, This people says, The time has not come, The time that the Lord's house should be built. They thought there's still time. But then, verse 3 says, Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet saying, is it time for you yourself to dwell in your paneled houses and this time to lie in ruins, this temple to lie in ruins? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. And then verse 6 says, You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. You know what God was saying to the people of Israel? 
you have set your priorities wrong. You should be first seeking my kingdom, my righteousness, and building my temple first. And when you do that, I will do the rest for you. The problem is you set the priorities wrong, and that's why you're not seeing the blessings, you're not seeing the breakthroughs. You do things, but nothing is happening. And let me tell you, church, this is what Satan is doing. He is deceiving the people of God to believe, you know, that, oh, your first priority is this, first priority is that in your life, but your first priority is God. And that's why Jesus said, Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. This is what happened with Martha and Mary. You remember Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to Jesus, but Martha was busy doing things, other things. And what happened? Was Martha filled with joy? Was she having a peace of God in her heart? What does the Bible say? She got frustrated. She went to Jesus and complained. My sister is not helping me. And Jesus said she has chosen the right things, the right thing to sit at the feet of Jesus to hear him. I just want to encourage you, church. Let us set our priorities right before God. And I'm telling you, when you do that, you will see breakthroughs, things will happen. You will see how God uses you for his glory. You know, I was just talking to you about that man earlier in the parliament. You know, I know him from a long time. And he used to just come in the church and sit in the church. And when I became the pastor of that church, I used to always watch him sitting at the back row. And I could sense the hand of God over his life. I went and spoke to him and I said to him, would you like to be in the leadership team? And he said, okay. And I'm telling you, he was such a committed guy. Imagine, he used to work in London and he used to come from his work after his work and be there for every church meeting. Every church meeting he used to be there. Youth meeting, he used to lead the youth group in our church. He used to be there leading the youth group, very committed. And I saw him from how God lifted him up, raised up. He was, the, he was as, working as an engineer in parliament. How God opened up doors for him and raised up in the high places. Because I believe that he said the priority is right in his life, seeking God first. So I want to encourage you. There is that sound of abundance of rain. It's coming. Let us not be found sleeping. But let us be found like Elijah, going on our knees and praying and expecting God to move. Amen? So let us prepare for the rain when it comes. And our prayer is this, Lord, let it rain. Let it rain. I'm telling you, Stanmore is waiting. Winchester is waiting for the sons and daughters of God to rise up. This nation is waiting for the sons and daughters of God to rise up. Today you hear this message, you can just listen and forget about it but my prayer is this lord let this word that is sown will bear fruit in each one of your life and my prayer for each one of you is this that each one of you will be used in god's kingdom for his glory you know in your workplace in the businesses that you do wherever you are you will be that great witness and influence in the lives of people Amen? Do you desire that? That you be an influence for him, for God's glory.
wherever you are. So let this be your prayer this morning. Lord, here I am. Use me for your glory. Can I ask the worship team to come and play the music? With that sound of abundance of rain, let us worship him. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us, all, let us all close our eyes at this moment. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. You know, as there was famine in Israel, and it looked like for some time there was no hope. Things were all going wrong. Maybe there is some of you here, you're facing some kind of famine in your life. Things are not going right. But I want to say, there is the sound of abundance of rain. There is that miracle that is coming. There is that breakthrough coming. God is going to open doors for you. Just receive right now. Do not believe the lies of the enemy. Enough of lies he has told you that you are good for nothing. You are a failure. Nothing is going to happen. you have a choice to make to believe in the God of miracle or to believe the lie of the enemy I choose to believe in the God of miracle he is the God who will make a way in the wilderness springs of living water in the desert place. Thank you, Jesus. As we worship, if anyone needs prayer for your personal life, for that breakthrough, for that open doors, come in front. If you need that, don't sit there, wait there. You know, many times when you get up from the chair and take those step of faith to come in front I believe your miracle has already started when you do that because you choose to believe God to do a miracle for you so as we worship feel free to come in front and the leaders will be happy to pray for you